What we do with these children is push their bassinets to the side and allow them to die. Hi, we're here at Planned Parenthood at Silver Hill Road, 5001 Silver Hill Road, another Planned Parenthood uh, here in the Washington, D.C. area. We are in Maryland, where you can do abortions all the way up till the moment of birth. And so this one specifically does chemical abortions, something we should be concerned about. My name is Missy Smith. Wake Up is the name of the organization that I formed 25 years ago. Women Against the Killing and Exploitation of Unprotected Persons. And we got that when we found out about the trafficking of baby body parts. So I just I became very, very um, upset about it and intent on doing it. I just, we have to do something. So four women and I got together on December 8th, which is of course, the Feast of the Immaculate Conception, we did that purposely, and we formed Wake Up. As you know, when you're in the pro-life movement, you just learn things that are shocking and amazing, and then you get to the point where you think that everybody should know those things, and everybody right. knows them where we now know. I mean, if you stop and think about it, um, most people don't know that the horror, what's going on, and, and the history. We do sidewalk counseling and give sidewalk uh, seminars and how to sidewalk council. It's been an enormous, uh, beautiful, beautiful spiritual journey. It started on a, a bit of a, a sad note in one way in that my our, our 19 year old son had a heart attack and died. I had been raised Catholic so I kept thinking, I know where he is, I know he's in heaven. I feel uh, as though our son's dying it, albeit shocking and albeit that I, I miss him physically, um, it's been my redemption. John had been born with Down syndrome. He died in 93, 1993. It's been a while, but, you know, I went almost immediately to Medjugorje. I mean, the fruit of going is enormous grace. God has opened all these doors. I haven't, this is not me, but I've learned so much and have done so many really exciting things. I mean, it to, to fight for life. With social media, you see the beauty. These pe people like myself are excited to share this truth that these children are pure and spotless and they bring enormous joy to our lives. And when John was born, the uh, pediatrician at the hospital said to my husband, what we do with these children is push their bassinets to the side and allow them to die. My husband was horrified. He just couldn't believe, it. he didn't tell me right away. He immediately called um, a neurologist. The uh, neurologist came and, and looked at our son, the newborn infant, and he said, um, do not bring this child home. He will ruin your marriage. He will ruin your family. And um, I've already contacted an institution in Philadelphia. They'll take him from the hospital there. And my husband did tell me that. And I was, I did become very hysterical. He said, stop, it's okay. It was just a, an opinion. And I said, well, it's a terrible opinion. <laughs> Don't ever say that again. And it, it turned out that, I mean, my, our, my husband was just, adored this child. He took him to the racetrack. He took him out to our uh, the all men's burning tree golf club. And he just, you know, was his pal and, and he brought joy to everyone. And um, when he died, there was standing room only at the church. And he had given just his mere presence gave, it was just, he emanated the love of God. They actually didn't eliminate Down syndrome. They just promoted abortion so heavily that anyone who uh, comes up with a test, all of a sudden they're going to immediately abort that child. 
Yeah. I don't know about you, but it doesn't solve any problems. Well, so. in, a, in a larger sense, I just want to say that we, we're all unique and that we're all children of God. I think we have to celebrate our uniqueness and, and there's a dignity to man that needs to be addressed that the more educated one gets, the more they rely on book knowledge and not maybe common sense or even God sense. I just had to say, I, you know, I, I think we, we need to value all of life. What would you say to young people who are first and now getting into the pro-life movement? What should they be involved in? How can they actually make a difference uh, moving forward? I think paramount is when these young people are getting involved is to ask the question about when does life begin? I think sidewalk counseling is, uh, is very up and coming. I found in my own experience as a sidewalk counselor uh, that no woman naturally wants to have an abortion. Something is driving it. I think the young people are more open maybe to learning and being educated. And um, there are wonderful, wonderful groups like yourself that are educating young people uh, about when life begins and how precious it is. Because from my generation, we had, there were no sonograms. We relied on doctor's word. But I think that generation has passed. I think we are finding out we've been lied to. I think these, peop these young people are gonna be more savvy. They are more open and they wanna know what's going on, what's the real truth, and then they'll go out. They'll be our warriors for life, you know? On our journey to meet Sister Didi, we decided to first visit the Franciscan Monastery of the Holy Land. This beautiful and historic site located in Washington, D.C. is a replica of significant Christian shrines and offers a unique opportunity to experience the sacred places of the Holy Land without leaving the country. The monastery and its stunning architecture and peaceful gardens provides a serene environment for reflection, prayer, and learning about the rich history of the Franciscan missions. Our stop here added depth and meaning to our trip, allowing us to immerse ourselves in a spiritual and cultural experience before continuing to meet Sister Didi. I'm the superior of the Washington, D.C. House of the little workers of the Sacred Hearts. I'm a general surgeon. I do free surgery for the uninsured in here in D.C. And we have a pregnancy mission where we do ultrasounds for mothers who want to say, say yes to life. The pro-life issue is the, uh, for the unborn is that we do the abortion pill reversal. This is where we have an ultrasound machine downstairs, three-dimensional, that we have reversed about 70 Eight percent of our patients moms successfully. The national average is about 60. But if you look on the OBGYN, American College of OBGYN, they'll say that it's not scientifically proven and that it doesn't work. So I always tell people, if it doesn't work, we have to ask our 70 percent of our babies right. why they're still alive. So. Well, you got a lot of national attention a couple of years ago. Tell me that story about how you ended up on the stage at the Republican National Convention. I was in the chapel here praying and asking God to allow me to be more of His voice for life that I felt like I hadn't done enough for Him. So I prayed and asked Him to use me any way He wanted. And about two hours later, I received a call from the Trump White House and they asked if I would speak at the RNC. I didn't really know too much about that because I don't focus on those things. I'm, a, I'm one of those one, I vote for, if you go for life, everything else follows through. So I've always felt that, been that way. But uh, I asked if I spoke, could I speak on the sanctity of life? And they said, yes. So that's how that uh, unfolded. Uh, and uh, it sounds like you're getting a lot of attention after the fact now. Yeah, well, the first 72 hours I got attention, but it was not good attention. I was called all sorts of names, you know, uh, accused of a lot of things. And then, but then after the, the evil, um, angry voices subsided, a lot of people asked if I would speak um, and help them on their, you know, fundraising for uh, pregnancy centers and 
pro-life missions and uh, that sort of thing. So the, you know, the good, I suppose, my prayer to be his vo God's voice was answered in a way that I wasn't even expecting. So someone, some people say, well, religion and politics and abortion and politics, they should all be separate. We should separate them all out. So what do you say to that? I don't believe the abortion issue, euthanasia, the transgender issue, all those, I don't think those are political issues. Those are moral and theological issues. And we as American citizens need to stand strong about that. Tell me your pro-life journey and pro-life story. Well, my journey is uh, pretty quick and easy. I grew up in a very devout Catholic family. And uh, my parents were just wonderful role models. So it, to me, it comes naturally. If you're a Catholic, you must support any issue that is life-giving um, from the moment of conception till natural death. But we had a mother come. She, I was, I tried to spend Thursdays, but I haven't been that great lately, but to go to Planned Parenthood to pray as a sidewalk counselor. I saw this young lady. She was atypical, but I, something inside of me said, you know, go after her. So I went after her with um, a little card and I said, um, I'm a physician and if you just took the abortion pill, because Planned Parenthood makes you take the pill right there. They want to make sure you take it. And I said, we can help you. We can reverse that. Just go, I'm a doctor. We can help you and just go online. And she stopped and looked at me and she said, sister, I appreciate that. And off she walked. I was like stunned that she actually communicated. Usually I'll, they usually you know, give you this finger and all that. That evening we got a, we got a call. I actually have a friend who works in Char Charlottesville and she'll take a lot of the calls for the, to reverse. She started the reversal, but she said she lives in DC. Could you take over? So yeah, so, I, so we set her up to come here in our convent. And the next day, and I didn't really recognize her, but as we went to um, do the ultrasound and everything, she said, Sister, do you, rec do you recognize me? And I said, um, she said, you came to me yesterday at Planned Parenthood and said, you know, there's a reversal. And I, had I not talked to you, I would not have known that. So I said, well, thank God. So after we did the ultrasound and everything looked good at that time, we sat down with her. You, you know, it's a really nice little cozy environment we have downstairs. And then she started to cry. She said, well, God, forgive me for what I did. And I said, because she goes, I'm Catholic, I'm pro-life. And I said, um, well, God has already forgiven you. I said, you have to forgive yourself. And there's a great way to do that, which is confession. You know, sadly, the baby did not make it. But so to me, this sort of exemplifies what we as Christians should do, Catholics, pro-lifers should do. We have that wonderful gift of um, con uh, reconciliation. So she was given that opportunity to clean that slate, you know. What inspires you? The Blessed Sacrament, if we talked, walked two feet around the corner, the most blessed sacrament. So everything that we're talking about, everything that, that, that I'm doing is not really me, it's Christ who's doing it. And it's, I'm just a, a donkey, a mule. Um, but it's through Him, through the Blessed Sacrament that it gives us the courage and the strength to do whatever we need to do. What do you say to young people who are up and coming who maybe want to get involved in the pro-life movement or, or aren't quite sure where they fit in? I tell them to go to the chapel and ask the Lord, Lord, where do you want me to go? To whom shall I go? Sometimes it's the little things that are more important than the big. So no, no job is so little or so big. You know, as long as we're doing it each moment for Christ. After meeting with two inspiring pro-life heroes, we made our way to the iconic Lincoln Memorial. Surrounded by the grandeur of this architecture, our visit provided a profound and reflective end of our day. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and make sure to share with all of your friends, and we'll see you on the next episode at ProLifeTour.com.